and wait for her to get started. Here's the question. Who knows what A and the word I'm going to fill in here is Profit. Profit. A leper. Oh, I know what a leper is. Who knows what a leper is? No, not a leopard. Not a leopard. A leopard. Okay, who, who thinks it's a tiger with spots? <laughs> it is not a tiger with spots. That's a. Okay, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I, when I was four years old, when I was four years old, and my mom was my Sunday school teacher, and she said, Does anybody in class know what a leopard is? And I put my hand up. I knew what a leopard was. I knew what a leper was. She said, she looked at me. She said, I didn't. She told me later, she said, I didn't think you knew what it was. But she called me anyway. I said, it's a tiger with spots. <laughs> Did she laugh? Is she, she kept herself from laughing. That's a leopard. Oh, okay. That's a tiger leopard. with spots. Yeah. That's a leopard. <laughs> A leper. Real quick, real, real quick, Eric. It's a person with a skin disease. Skin disease. I had a person that likes like. I had a person that has an orange beard and has a like green outfit. And that's a leprechaun. Yeah. That's a leprechaun. You were gonna say the same thing? No. Oh. I was gonna say what's common. No, actually, Eric had it right. It's a skin A leper is someone with what's called leprosy. And leprosy, it, leprosy was a skin disease. And we don't see it much anymore. But back then it was quite common. And it, it was a really gross skin disease. No, no more comments. No more comments. It was a really gross disease, and your skin would just run and ooze, and, and the skin would start coming off of your of your arms and your legs and your face. And it was really gross. And here's what's even worse was, it was contagious. Do you know what contagious means? Yes, I do. I have no idea what we have now. If you have it, someone else can have it. That's right. And Miguel was right on, I heard Miguel say that, what, what did you say again? Contagious is like, like, like it, it's, it, it's really spread, you're just like, I really know. What I meant to say was, it could be spread easily. Yes, exactly. That's what contagious means. It could be spread easily. It's like what we have now. Like what we have now. Now, what we have now is, it's, look, when it first came out, People panicked all over it, and it, it is serious because I know I know people who have died from it. My dad had it when he died, and so it's very scary, and it scared people to death. But now we're kind of we're not we're it's like man we're over this. We're really over this, and people aren't as scared about it as much anymore because they're saying, you know what, the world's a scary place. Get used to it. But, and, I, and I'm not trying to downplay it, but here's the thing, it is contagious. When, back a little more than a year ago, Miss Faith got it. And she spread it to me. And I spread it to our daughter Elizabeth. And so we all got it. And we survived. And here I am. Yeah. Yeah. I did all right. And she still survived. Yeah, not every, not everybody does. We just look. I know four people who didn't just last month. Yeah. I know. So it it is a scary thing. But here's the thing. God says, don't be afraid. God says, don't be afraid. Real quick, favor, and then I'm going to move on. I thought you had your hand up. Yeah. Yes. My teacher got it. Your teacher got it. I think probably a lot of people in this room have already had it. And if you haven't already had it, you know somebody who has. Real quick, 
Nathaniel. My grandma died. I mean, my Lisa. Yep. Yeah. My dad Lisa died. She died with it. Because he had the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Like yeah, you had it too. You had it, and your brothers had it too. And your whole family had it. All right, I got to move on, guys. So leprosy was very, people were, you know how people are afraid of getting COVID now? People were more afraid of leprosy back then because it was something that was, they didn't know how to fix it. You see, at least today they can give you a shot and they can give you other uh, medications. And we know that if, look, if you get your proper nutrition, chances are you're going to live. Most people live. But this one, leprosy, they didn't. They didn't. And so what they did was they made everybody who had it move out and live by themselves, and you couldn't be around anybody. You know what that's called? Quarantine. Quarantine, exactly. They quarantined people. And so if you had it, they made you leave the city. You weren't allowed to live with your family. You weren't allowed to live with the city, in the city. And you had to figure out how to survive on your own. Nobody was going to come and bring you food because they were afraid of getting it too. And so you had to figure out how to survive. Real quick, uh, Solomon. Yes, at any time. You don't have to ask permission. <clears throat> so that's what leprosy was. And there, the Bible tells us in Luke 17... And it's, uh, for those of you who have your Bibles and you want to turn to it, Luke is in the Gospels, which means it's in the New Testament. So you split your Bible, and you split your Bible again. And if you don't know how to do that, then you can go in the front, and it'll tell you what page Luke starts on. Luke chapter 17. It's right up, it's right up here. Luke chapter 17. And those, who are, those of you who are following in your Bibles, it starts in verse 11. And we're talking about Jesus here. And it says here, now it happened, talking about Jesus here, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. Well, there he goes. You guys remember from last week we talked about Samaria? And we talked about the Samaritan people? And the Jews didn't have anything to do with them. They said, oh, you guys are gross. We don't want anything to do with you. But Jesus didn't worry about that. And as he entered a, set, a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. Okay, so they were keeping their distance. They didn't want to come anywhere near Jesus because they didn't want Jesus to catch what they had. And so they were standing far off and they lifted up their voices, which means they shouted. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now Jesus knew exactly what the problem was. It's kind of obvious when they've got oozing skin and skin's falling off of them. It's kind of obvious what the problem was. And so they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. Now, here's what happens. When, when a person, and sometimes people would get healed of leprosy. And if that happened, that they, sometimes it would clear up by itself. And if that happened, what was supposed to happen is they were supposed to go and show themselves to the priest. And the priest would look at them and say, okay, you're clean. Everything that we need has happened and you're clean. You can go ahead and you can live in the house again. You can live in the town again. You can be with people again. But a priest had to do that. You know what a priest is? You, you look, looked like you wanted to answer. Do you know what's a, what's a priest? Okay, what do you think, uh, our, uh, Anaya? He, uh, he okay, a priest is the one who would bring the word of God to the people. And so the priest w worked in the temple, kind of like our preachers do today. And so they, but they did a whole lot more than the preachers. You see, when you get sick and 
when you get healed of your sickness, they don't say, hey, go see Pastor Greg. And Pastor Greg will say, okay, you're clean. You can live among people because he's not a doctor. He doesn't know. Pastor Greg's a smart man. He's a very smart man. You can tell him I said, you can tell him I said that. You want to say it one more time? So Pastor he Greg it. is a smart man. He's a very smart man. You can tell him I said that. <laughs> there, we got it on we got it on camera. But he doesn't he doesn't know medical stuff. That's not that's not what he's good at. So but the priests, they were they were trained in how to spot medical problems. They were trained in all of that. And so they would say, go show yourself to the priest. And if the priest says you're good, you're good. You can go live back with everybody and your sickness is over. So Jesus told them, go, show yourselves to the priest. Now, why would Jesus say that? Is your hand up or are you just stretching? Just stretching. Why would Jesus say that? Why would Jesus tell them to go show themselves to the priest? Actually, they were already healed. They were already healed. Because all Jesus had to do is say the word, and they were healed. And that's why he said, go show yourself to the priest, because you don't go to the priest until you it's a, hey, you know what? I'm looking better. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go show myself to the priest. No, they were already healed. Jesus healed them right there and then. And so it was that as they went. They were cleansed. They were healed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. In other words, he came back to Jesus and he began to thank God for what had happened. And he was a Samaritan. Now, wait a minute. How many were healed? Ten. Eight hundred. Ten, 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 ten. Dominic reads the board. Ten. Dominic reads the board. How many were healed? Ten. ten. How many came back to Jesus and said thank you? One. 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 Wait a minute. Yeah. And that's and that's what Jesus said too. He, Jesus answered. He said, "Weren't ten cleansed? Where's the other nine? What happened to the other nine? Were there none found that returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? He was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Samaritan. And yet he knew he had a thankful heart because of his healing. And he said to him, Jesus said to the man, he said, Rise, get up, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now when he was asked, okay, that's... That's the end of that. That's the end of that story. I was going on too far. See, that's the thing. First of all, here's, here's what I want you to know. Number one, Jesus heals. Jesus heals. You got a sickness? Jesus heals. Jesus can heal you. How do you... Wait a minute. Is, is Jesus on this earth today? No. No, he's up in heaven. I don't even... Actually, we know he's living in our hearts, too. The presence of Jesus. We need to go up. But here's the thing. Jesus heals. And all you have to do is ask. Now how do you ask? Pray, pray. How do you ask? Pray. 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 Do you hear what everybody else is saying? Pray. pray. Now, how do you pray? How do you pray? How does that work? All right. You talk to God just like you talk to me. You talk to God just like you talk to your mom or your dad. That's how. It's easy. Yes, Solomon. So can God still heal us even though we're Yes. Yes. Because actually, you see, God is not, God doesn't have a physical body like we do. God is what they call a spirit. And he's everywhere. He's everywhere at one time. Now that freaks you out, doesn't it? He's everywhere. Not only that. Okay, I, I, I'm going to really mess with your heads. He's in the past, he's in the present, he's in the future. No. Get a load of that. That means he That's he's how present. God knows what's going to happen in the future. That's how God knows. Because he's everywhere. Is that why he has dropped all? See, 
time doesn't exist with God. That'll play with your head. That'll play with your head. Time doesn't exist with God. Hmm. Katie? How old are you? You just turned six last week, didn't you? Uh, did you yes? You got a birthday coming up, don't you? Yeah, I do. How old are you going to be? Twelve. Katie just turned six last week, but Tias is about to turn twelve. You see, we, that's all we know is we, we know time. What you got? He's about to turn twelve. Next, next, oh, 11? Okay, he's got a birthday too. What day? 24th, and yours is when? 16th. 16th, so he's eight days older than you. He's got you by eight days. But see, that's the thing. We all think about time. I'm looking up and I'm saying it's almost time for Dave to shut up because pastor's going to be done soon. <laughs> That's all we think about is time. But with God, time doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. But here's the thing. I'm, I've, I kind of got off on a tangent here. Let me get back to the lesson. Jesus heals. Do you have a sickness? Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus. Because he heals you. He will heal you. What if, what if, what if you have COVID? What if you have COVID? What happens? Do you think God can heal that? Yes. Yes. Yes, He can. You know, you want, you want something else that'll blow your mind? Jesus healed a dead man. Yes, He did. There's a friend of His named Lazarus, and Lazarus had died. He was in the grave for four days, and Jesus said. And here comes Lazarus. He was all wrapped up like a mummy. So he could to walk like a penguin. But Lazarus wasn't dead anymore. Jesus can heal death too. Whatever you need, Jesus can do it. Whatever you need. Anything. Anything. Because God is greater. God is greater than sickness. <laughs> Jesus was dealing with one of the most feared diseases of that time. People were afraid. They were deathly afraid of leprosy. They were deathly afraid they were going to catch it. And if they caught it, they would probably die. Jesus was not afraid. And he healed. He healed everybody. All right, I'm going to stop right there. I just want you to know that you don't have to be afraid. I don't care what happens to you. You don't have to be afraid because God is there for you. God is there for you. I don't care if you get sick. God can heal you. All you have to do is ask and believe. All you have to do is ask and believe. And God can heal you. All right, I want everybody to bow your heads. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we thank you because you are a healing God. There is no disease that is too great for you to heal. Lord, even multiple diseases, they are not too great for you. And I know that if we ask you, and we believe in our hearts, that you will do it. And we thank you, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.